welcome back. So, last session we were discussing about uh, a file how to identify the which is the word that is occurring many number of times right, highest number of times. So, we will get into details of the programs. We told like uh, there is a file which has number of words and uh, we find histogram of the word, but our objective now is slightly different where we identify that out of these words which word has the highest occurrence that is what is our output. So, in our example if you look at we need the output like the is the word which is which has occurred many number of times that is maximum is how many 7 in our case. Similarly, here 2 is a word which has occurred many number of times what is that number it is 16 in nature right. So, now this problem statement the earlier concept what we had like splitting them and trying to first occurrence adding that to, to a dictionary for if it is first occurrence we in make it as one value as one if already occurred then what did we do previous value plus one. So, that we end up with all the words being processed then we gave a histogram telling that this is word one number of occurrences word two number of occurrences and so on. In this we need a highest occurrence right. So, going into the logic of this in our earlier understanding a small change in the logic that is all right. So, now we get the name of the file we open the file we read the file then we split that right. So, if you look at the split also we do not have a parameter here. So, which indicates that the split is occurring on a delimiter blank space. So, we have all our words in this. So, now okay, the old program that we had discussed in previous session creating an empty dictionary then for each word for each word we are using a get function. So, now what get does if that word is the first time that is occurring the value is 0. If in case the word is already there then we get that value right. Now, do not uh, like uh, get into conf con uh, the confusion saying that ok if you look at this code recall we had something like an additional statement like plus 1 here which is missing, but do not get confused plus 1 is there right. So, by mistake it has come down to the next line. So, it is still this is the complete line right. So, if the first time it is occurring it will give you 0 plus 1 where 1 is stored into that or if already it is occurring in the dictionary then we need a previous value. So, get will get what is the previous value of this plus 1 the updated value again it is stored back. So, this whole thing is our previous program code ok. Next is our logic what is that logic that logic we want a highest in number and which is that word that is occurring right. So, here we have taken uh, default values like big count equal to because we need two things no count is also necessary and which word is also necessary. So, we use the uh, variable by name big count which will tell us this and big word which will tell us which is that word right. So, both are none indicating that both are nothing nil right for word in the count. Now, we need why we need word here we have word no why we need word and account because we have already a dictionary in that dictionary we want to know assume that there are like this 2 is the and with the values like 16, 6, 4, 3 and so on all these are our values of the dictionary. So, now what is our objective take first one look for the which is the word and what is the occurrence is this occurrence maximum how to find maybe we will compare that with next ne compare this 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 whichever is highest we will figure out and the corresponding word for that right. So, it is nothing but a key and this is nothing but a value. So, what we are doing for in for in for in right. So, now what is our uh, dictionary name counts counts is dictionary. Now, we want both items right we want both if I keep counts then what do I get it is a key, but here we want both key and a value. So, we will use a function called items right count items. So, in that case it gives me two things one is key second one is value. So, we are storing that key into word value into count two variables right key into word and value into count. So, now we will check if I have taken big count right if big count is none if big count is none or count greater than big count. So, if big count is none then meaning what first time we are getting that variable 
in this first time this should become big count that is what we are doing big count equal to count and big word equal to word right or so in that case if it is not none then in that case we have a count there. So now we will check the count what we have is it greater than the big count if yes then that we have to update a value. So what we are doing big count equal to word big sorry big count equal to count and big word equal to word and finally after this is done we are printing the big word along with the big count right. So we will take an example try to understand it more clear with respect to the code right. So now we will take few examples uh, one a and d there is a word with four occurrences then e is a word with uh, six occurrences then uh, the with two occurrences to with 16 occurrences and there are many but we will not consider them right. So this is two occurrence this is 16 occurrences ok. Now so we will run through this where we have the code ok fine. So now till here we have already done so next we will start from here. Right, this is our logic. We will take big count equal to none, big word equal to none. Okay, done. For word count, comma in count of items. So in the case, this whole thing is counts. So first time we get and and four, where and is nothing but word, four is nothing but count. So we'll check if big count is none. Yes, this becomes true. So once it becomes true, it jumps into the loop, and uh, what it takes big word equal to word, big count equal to count. So now big word is nothing but and big count is nothing but 4. So, in that case this is this happens to be 4 and this became and next. So, as it is a for loop so it will go to next next element next element is 16 is the key 6 is the value. So, it will come down here. So, this becomes is 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 count is 6. So, it will go big count is none no it is not. So, it will go to r part what is count count is the value that we have encountered that is 6 and big count value is 4. 6 greater than 4 yes true. So, in that case we update big count equal to word what is that word word is is. So, in that case this changes. So, this becomes is and count big count equal to count count is nothing but 6. So, this becomes 6 right. So, in that case again go back it will be the with 2. So, this becomes the this becomes 2 then it will count big count what is the value 6 is none no count what is the count count what, what we have encountered that is 2 and big count is 6. So, none no 2 greater than 4 6 no. So, it will go back to the for loop go for the next it next is to with 16 to with 16. So, this becomes to and the value becomes 16. So, this word is to and count is 16. So, it will come big count no it is not none count what is the count count is 16 and what is big count it is 6. So, 16 greater than 6 yeah very true. So, in this case big word equal to word. So, now this becomes 2 and this becomes 16 big count equal to 16 then it will go to the for loop there are no more elements count the for loop. So, it will print what is it big word which is nothing but 2 big count is nothing but 16. So, it'll, this is our output right. So, now see same program small small modification in the code we are able to achieve a big lot problem we are able to solve right. So, here this is what in real life we have like we will have a file or maybe the data can come from a database put into a file that file can be fed as input to our program then we are able to count the number of occurrences here right. So, there are humorous applications of this where the occurrences are very important for us right. Now, without using the concept of dictionary can we solve this problem definitely yes, but when you take that as dictionary as a concept it becomes very easy for a programmer to get the work done in when not using a dictionary. Now, so these are the few uh, methods that are available with dictionary which we had discussed right few of them we have not discussed we will just look into it. Now, keys yeah we had discussed right what it does returns a list returns a list containing only the keys of the dictionary pop pop indicates what removing an element right. So, in that case when you use pop what are we doing 
remove the element with specified key. So, in that case, we give key as a parameter. So, that element will be removed from the dictionary. Right? Now, if key is removed, what about the value? It is nothing but key value pair will be removed. Key value pair is removed. Next, we have another function called pop item. Pop item. So, pop item you do not have any parameter here. So, uh, here what are we doing when pop? We are telling which key, right? Based on that key, that key value pair will be deleted. But when I tell a function called pop item, last inserted key value pair will be deleted. So, which of the key value pair last inserted, that key value pair will be removed. Next, set default. We have a specific function where returns the value of the specified key if key does not exist, insert the key and the specified value. Now, we have a confusion here. Is this not get which we had discussed just few minutes back? Wait. What is get? Returns the value of a specified key. Right, returns the value of a specified key if found. If not found, we can give a default value. Then what is the difference with set default? Right. Now the difference is get will not modify anything, it will return a value, but here it modifies the value, it makes the default value along with that it will insert. So this is one important point here, right? The difference between set default and get. Get will not insert set a default will insert an element if does not exist. Now, there is a method called update where it tells us to add an element into a dictionary. Now, adding an element in dictionary we knew, right? So, how we will have a dictionary name key with a value, right? That is one method. Second method is using function called update. Right? Then we have values which we have come across. What it will tell? it will give us the list of values that are there in the dictionary. As we have key, we have values which values, the function name is values, yes is there, right, values which will return the list of all the values in the dictionary. Then next set of functions, clear, remove all elements from the dictionary, but dictionary, dictionary exists, but values are removed. So, in that case, this clear will make what? Empty dictionary, it creates an empty dictionary. Then you have a copy which returns a copy of the dictionary, then you have from keys which returns the dictionary with a specified key and a value, then you have a get method that we have understood, we have items, we know that this will return a pair, key value pair, it returns a key value pair. So, these are the functions that are available with the dictionary. Now, we will take few exercises, try to understand like for a particular requirement, what is the code that we need to add so that we get that requirement. Now, look at that. Here, car equal to, so in that case, we have a curly braces which shows that it is a dictionary, then key value, key value, key value, yes, print, okay, something is missing here. Now, what is the question? Use get method, use get method to do what? To print the value of a model, to print the value of a model key of a car, right. So, get method returns the value of a specified key. Use a get method to get a value of a key. What is the key? Model. So, in that case, we should use model here, model and what function? We should use a get function. Now, what is the syntax? What is actually the complete code here, right? So, print use a get method to get the value of a model, right. So, in that case we know what is the, this is, this happens to be a value, this happens to be a key. So, we will use that with a get function. Shall we check? Yeah. See, this is the answer. Car dot get model. Now, we discussed about only get with the parameter model, but why car is being added here? Because when you tell print, what to print? Right. So, in that case, this is the name of the dictionary, name of the dictionary, dictionary dot get. So, in that case, you are calling a function on a dictionary object and for which you are passing a parameter model. So, in that case, this will be our answer. Right. Next, 
car brand model year you have but what is the requirement requirement is change the year value what is the value 1946 i we want to make it as 2020 now how to make that can we change the value point number 1 yes because they are mutable in nature right now how to access this value yeah we know car car of year square bracket so in the case when i tell print what do i get 1964 now i want to modify i want to change the value as usual i have i i i can access this value and e equate the to 2020 then it should work out right so we'll check whether that is appropriate or not right okay car year equal to 2020 right car year equal to 2020 so automatically this value gets modified and the updated value will be 2020 right okay next question same set of tuple sorry not tuple same set of dictionary with a name car dictionary with name car so how to identify dictionary yeah we have this we have a key value pair which is separated by a comma okay everything is perfect now what do we want we want to add a key value pair where it's color and red color and red now when you look at this color and red so we have a colon indicating what this is the key and this is the value perfect right so now what should be our statement right so now to access assume that there was a color assume that there was a color here then how do how did how to, how to access that car color equal to red right so wherein this happens to be accessing and this happens to be a value that we are updating right now we look at are we yeah, when i do like this are we able to update something here right wherein we want a new member to be added to a, a dictionary car car color equal to red what did we write car color equal to red now so here what happened when i write like this two things one if color is an key already existing the new value will be updated if color as a key doesn't exist then this is added here into the dictionary color as a key and red as a value so this is how we add a, a new entity into a car in this example car dictionary okay next question we have all the elements now pop use a pop method so recall what pop is one second we'll go back to that yeah pop values ah, pop remove the element with a specified key so for pop if i give key then that key value pair will be eliminated so our objective is to check how to use pop change the value yeah adding is done ah use pop use pop method to remove a model from the car so in that case i want to remove this so what should be that maybe this is the function right this function can be called can be called on dictionary where in our example the dictionary name is car so it will be car dot pop and what should be our parameter right which key you are referring so that that has to be removed in in the question it says model so i have to write model here so we we'll look into it car dot pop model so in if i execute this then this line will be removed from the dictionary next clear what clear does so all the elements in the dictionary will be eliminated and hence it will be car with empty elements which we identify as what empty dictionary so car method to empty a car dictionary so how do i call car dot clear car dot the method name clear okay so now the two different types of collections which we had come across one list second dictionary second one dictionary the third collection is tuple third collection is tuple 
Now, what are the symbols which uh, as a programmer, how do I identify that it is a list, it is a dictionary, it is a tuple, recall. I have a square bracket which are enclosed in a square bracket. Next, curly braces, third, this braces, right. So, this happens to be the list, dictionary, tuple. So, in that case, what makes the difference of this? Are there any differences between these two? Yes, we have discussed that. Then we will also look into it, how tuples are different or unique when compared to list and dictionaries. Now, if there is no difference, then definitely not available, right? But that particular concept is available, hence indicating that there is some distinction between tuple, list and dictionaries, right? Tuples are another kinds of uh, collection, another kind of collection, type of collection where we have a sequencing. Now that is very much similar to list, that is very much similar to list. Now what is it? Indexing. So now if you have a list, if a list is there, then how do I access an element of a list using the indexing which starts with 0? If list is there, we told that indexing is the concept, indexing is the concept where the index starts with 0. Dictionary, indexing is not there, we have our own label, no indexing, so hence no 0, 1, 2 and so on and so on. But when it comes to tuples, tuples do have indexing concept which starts with 0, which starts with 0. So in that case, tuples are almost similar to the list. Right? So, where we have indexing, how to access everything as list is applicable to tuples. Now, how to create a tuple? Right? So, as usual we had right x equal to square bracket or maybe a curly braces where we told it is a dictionary, this as a list. Similar concept, this happens to be our tuple. Right? So, in that case first member, second member, third member. Now, replace the symbols with a square bracket, it becomes automatically a, a list. But replace this with a curly braces, no it is wrong because we have only the key, we do not have a value. But dictionary will have both always key and a value. Okay. So, this is our uh, tuple, then what is the tuple name in our example? X. What is, uh, we know that indexing concept is available, so hence this is 0, this is 1 and this is 2. So, when I print x of 2, it is nothing but Joseph. Now, tell me based on this, is ordering maintained in tuple, is ordering maintained in tuple as with the list, right. So, recall, in list order is maintained, definitely yes, but what about tuples? Based on the concept that it is still using indexing as list and index starts with 0, then occurrences definitely is maintained in tuple, right. So, in dictionary, occurrences are not maintained, but in tuple and list, occurrences are maintained, okay, good. These are a few differences between the three, right. Next, take this example, y equal to 1, 9 and 2, y equal to 1, 9 and 2. So, what you have after equal sign is a list, what you have after equal sign is a list. Keep this in mind, my next next subsequent slides I will tell you, is it is a list, how do I identify it is a list? Yeah, these things I have and the elements are separated by comma, it is a list. So, can I write a list before equal sign? What I have? I have a, equal, a list after equal sign, can I write that after equal, uh, before equal sign? If yes, then what is the concept behind that? That will be our further discussion, right? Okay, going back here. So, we have uh, y equal to 1, 9 and 2, then we will say print y. Now, see the output 1, 9, 2, 1, 9, 2, order is maintained. That is what I told you like ordering in list, ordering in tuples are maintained, ordering in uh, dictionary, no, right? So, no ordering in dictionary. Now, here as usual. As we have list, there are a lot of functions that we can apply on list. Similarly, we can also apply functions on the tuples, right? So, here this is our tuple 192, I can call a function max where y is a tuple, right? 
y is a tuple that I am passing. So, in the tuple y, I have value 1, 9 and 2, which is the highest among that because it is a max. So, 9 is the answer. Right. Now, so here, can we do some iteration? As we did with list, as we did with list, we do have an iteration on a tuple. So, here what is our tuple? Y. Our tuple is Y. So, we can tell for iteration in Y, print iteration. That is nothing but printed. Right? So, in our example, first time 1 will come down here, 9 will come down here, 2 will come down. So, first time it will be 1, second time it will be 9, next time it will be 2. So, what are we printing? Printing ITER. So, printing this. So, 1, 9 and 2. So, as we have, so uh, this slide itself will tell us like, okay, there are lot of similarities between tuples and list. So, what is applicable for list? Many of them are applicable for tuple also. Then why a new thing tuple has come into picture, right? So, it is about updation, right? Okay. Just now it all, right? It is about updation where tuples are immutable, right? When it, uh, when we discussed about list, we told mutable. What about dictionary? Dictionaries are also mutable, but tuples are immutable. Meaning what? If I have created a tuple like this, if I have created a tuple like this, then x987, then can I change the value? If yes, then it is mutable. Now, look at this concept x equal to 9, 8, 7, x of 2 equal to 6, print x, ah, we got modified, 7 got modified, but we are telling that it is immutable. Please concentrate, this is not a tuple, it is a list. I will just erase, see here, it is a list because we have a square bracket. So, if it is a list, it is mutable in nature. So, in that case, the index 2 which is value 7, I am modifying to 6 and printing, I got the value. This is up, apply, applicable, valid because it is a list. Now, what about this one, right? This happens to be a tuple, see, z equal to 5, 4, 3, z of 2. So, I want to modify 3 to 0, z of 2 equal to 0, what did I get? We got a error, trace back error saying that this particular assignment is not supported. Now, why not supported? Because it is immutable. We cannot change. Once you create a, a list, sorry, once you create a list, we can change. Once you create a tuple, you cannot modify the value of the tuple. You cannot modify these values. Existing values cannot be modified. Right? Now, this is about list, right? The third example is a string. Y equal to ABC is a string. So, Y of 2 equal to D. So, this we want to make it D strings also immutable. So, we get again the same error object does not support this assignment, right. So, in that case, the once the tuples are created, the existing values cannot be modified. But can we have a new tuple with an, uh, the existing values combining together? Yeah, definitely, but not z. We can use this value, create a new tuple saying x, y, and this x, y can have a value of this plus additional to that. So, in the case, it is nothing but what? You can create a new tuple with the existing tuple, but existing tuple values cannot be modified, cannot be altered because tuples are immutable in nature. Okay. Now, so here, if you look at, we have a function x equal to 3 to 1, x dot sort tuple has no attribute sort, x dot append, all these are applicable for list, right, x dot append, tuple object has no attribute called append, x dot reverse, tuples object has no attribute called reverse, right. So, in that case, you should be very careful that you should not use like sort, append, reverse, we have something different which will take care of it, right. Maybe uh, further going, we will try to look into it. Now, most of the list operations, most of the list operations work with tuples. So, in the case, the list operations what we have encountered are also applicable for tuples, like not all, right, most. Now, few of them, 
like okay t equal to tuple where i pass a string so if i try to print t if i try to print t then look at what do we get l separate u separate p separate i n s look at that i l p i n s right now this is our tuple next print t of 0 so index is 0 look at that we got the answer next print of print t of 1 is to 3 right slicing which we discussed in the uh, list also right start with 1 go till 3 but do not consider 3 so start with 1 go till 3 but do not consider 3 so our output should be what u comma p yeah perfect u comma p here then t of 0 equal to a t is what this whole thing this is our tuple t t of 0 so in the case I am trying to modify this with capital A, right? What are we doing? Index 0, we have want to replace that with capital A. This is the statement. Now look at that. What did we get? The type error. What is the type error? You recall here, we have a ah, type error. What it says? The tuple object assignment not supported. So, we have an error. Next, t equal to a plus t of 1. So, what is this t of 1? So, t of 1 indicates that you have, you start with 1, go till last. Start with 1. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Start with 1, go till last. So, in the case, we will have u, p, i, s, n, everything, right. Then, for which we have added a, for which we have added a. So now, addition of this is nothing but t. I will try to print t. So now, this is nothing but capital A, capital A. So now, look at this. Is this statement valid? Definitely yes. But why it is valid? Because the old value that we have, we are not trying to modify that value. We are creating a separate list again. Right, that list happens to be our tuple, tuple t, a new tuple that we are creating and the old tuple value we are accessing and adding a new one to that and updating it. So, in that case, we are not trying to modify i with uh, like uh, maybe like uh, b where we tell that t of something equal to b which is invalid in nature right? because they are immutable. So, if you look at most of the functions which are applicable for list are also applicable for tuples. Now, normally in uh, all of our like either it could be a list or dictionary, we identify how many functions are applicable for that using a function called dir, right. It will tell you how many, what are the list of the functions that are applicable for that particular concept. dir l, what is l? l is a list. So, all this are the functions which are applicable for list. All these are the functions which are applicable for the list. We may have a confusion like sort is there, we told sort cannot be used, right? small change there. Right? Now, okay. so here all these are the functions, append is one function, count is one function, extend and so on. All these are the functions that are applicable for the L, where in our case L is a list, right. Now, if I make like what? Convert list into a, this list into a tuple, then look for what functions are available, right. T equal to tuple, DIRT, DIRT. So, now check what is available? count index what is not available sort pop remove reverse and so on or maybe append right these functions are not applicable right so concepts of list are applicable to concept of tuple but when it comes to functions there are many set of functions which are not applicable for uh, tuple but applicable for list right so these are the functions which are applicable for the list these are the functions which are applicable for the tuple okay 
so what is that uh, concept or maybe mechanism which helps us like tuples are very good in python programming or tuples are more efficient right so when you look at since python does not have to build tuple structure to be modified so we don't have something called as a modification why because they are immutable they are simpler and more efficient in terms of memory usage and performance than list why because lists are modifiable so in our program we are making temporary variables we prefer to use tuple over list right because no change right and uh, the concept is what if i make them as a tuples then uh, one I, I i cannot modify my value so where it becomes something like a constant value and accessing will become more easier prone to error will be eliminated but when it is a list you have all that facility of modification everything okay so now as i told list can be on the left hand side so i'll go back to that slide yeah so if you look at this line where it says y equal to tuple 1 comma 9 comma 2 so in that case what is y y is a tuple okay this is a list right oh, sorry this is a tuple on the after equal sign can we have a tuple before equal sign that's what our objective is ah oh, we have x comma y so it's a tuple before equal sign and after equal sign we have a tuple 4 comma fred 4 comma fred so now is this valid yes so now how the first occurrence will go to the first occurrence on the left hand side and the right hand side so it's nothing but 4 will be copied to x fred will be copied to y so now look at when you print y you are getting fred a comma b equal to 99 comma 98 okay so when you print a we should get 99 yeah we have 99 here so now instead of writing like this x equal to 14 and y equal to fred right so instead of writing two assignment statement we can have we can combine both of them together like this right but very very important right number of parameters we should be very careful so we should have uh, equal number of parameters on their left hand side and also on the right hand side now uh, uh, small uh, changes right comparison comparison like what tuples with dictionary so empty dictionary right empty dictionary then we have uh, inserting a value then we are calling items as a function where we get key value pair and we are printing it we are printing it so what will be our output this with value 2 this with value 2 sorry value 4 right this is our output this is our output for this code now this is there is something change here look into it d what is d d is the dictionary d dot items d dot items t u p s right so uh, some variable name right now print t u p s look what it is giving you right now it's giving us a list it's giving us a list it's giving us a list with what with two members right first member and second member with key value right because it's coming from a dictionary it is considered as what this as one tuple this as the second tuple right so in that case from dictionary we know if i call items we are able to convert that into a list where each element is a what tuple each element is a tuple here right so you can look at this is the first member of the tuple second member next tuple first member second member so in the case we have two tuples here so item method in dictionary returns a list of key value key value 
tuples. So, this is a method which will convert a dictionary into a list where in the list each element is a key value pair which is each tuple. So, list of tuples, list of tuples inside a sorry, ah, yeah, perfect. List of tuples, these are the tuples which are list of tuples. This we achieve from dictionary using a method called items. So, this is an example for that. Now, tuples uh, can we compare tuples? Definitely, we can compare tuples. Like, example, we have set of numbers like 4 less than 6, we can compare the output could be true, false, and so on, right? Now, if you look at comparing tuples, you have more than one value, then how comparison is done? First one with first one, second one with second one, third one with third one, right? So, now we look into it 0, 1, 2, less than 5, 1, 2. So, 0 less than 5, yes, true, we got the answer, done. If you take up this one, 0 less than 0, no, 1 less than 3, true, we got the answer. So, in that case, this, this element is not compared with this, right? Why? First element is compared with first element with this. If it is true, fine, done. If it is false, go for the next one, go for the next one, go for the next one. If all are false, output will be false. If one, any one of them is true, we will stop there. So, 0 less than 0, false. 1 less than 3, yes, true. So, we got true and we will not compare this one. Right? Similarly, we can have uh, the alphabetical names also for the comparison. Right? So, comparison of uh, tuples are applicable. Right? So, the comparison operator works with the tuple. The first item is equal. Python goes to the next item. So, on until it finds an element that differs. So, in the case this, this compare, this, this compare based on the operator that we have. Now, so we told sorting of tuples is not there, but still, but still we can sort. Sorting, so if you go back to the list of functions that we have, yeah, sort is not there here, but still there are many instances where we need to sort them. Right? So, we can take advantage of uh, sort for tuples, but not directly, right? Remember that. So, okay, fine, we will go that step by step. One, we created an array which is nothing but a dictionary with D, name as D. Then we told D dot items. So, now it is T. T is nothing but a list of tuples. So, list of tuples. When you print this, you will get a list of tuples what? A 10, C 22, B 11. 1. So, we, this is our list of tuples. Now, what are we doing? T dot sort. T dot sort. Now, T dot sort is applicable because T is a list, not a tuple. Content of the list is a tuple, but not the whole thing as a tuple. So, it is still a list. So, we can perform a sort on this. After performing sort, look, if I display, look what changes has happened. We got A, we got B, we got C. So, in that case, T dot sort is performing the sorting criteria not on this value. It is performing the sorting criteria on the keys. Sorting criteria on the key. That is what it is happening here, right? So, now, sorting is achieved in terms of tuple but not directly using the concept of list, right? So, you should be very careful. You cannot have like uh, there is a tuple t1, t1 dot sort is invalid. But if t1 is a list, yes, it is valid. In the list, what is the criteria, right? So, here keys are taken and based on the key, the sorting is done. So, this happens to be applying sort for a tuple, but directly on a tuple cannot be applied. Okay. There is another function called sorted, a function called sorted. Now, what it could be? Guess. So, we can do this directly using a built-in function sorted that takes a sequence as parameter and return the list and return the list. Right. So, now, if you go back to our previous line, just erase this. What is the parameter? 
right. So, there is no parameter it says t dot salt, but we have another function called salted where we have the parameter right where we have the parameter. So, we have a t which is sorted based on d dot items, d dot items is this where we have the values a, c and so and after sorting you look at a, b, c the elements are sorted. Again when you use t either you sort or sorted based on the parameter, but always sorting is on keys always sorting is done on the keys. Right. So, this is another function where we can perform a sorting on tuples, but not directly it is on the list. Okay. Now, what we have done in the previous sort or sorted all are on keys. There may be an instance where I want to sort based on the value. Is it possible? Here is the answer. So, now look at C, it is a dictionary, I have an empty list, then we are appending that V comma A, V comma A to the list and we are printing it here, then we are printing it here. Then we call tem which is nothing but our list dot sort reverse equal to true, then we are printing it. Now, look at that values. 10. 22, 1, 22, 10, 1. Now, the confusion is we are using a sort method for even a key and also a value, then how it is applicable? Now, important point this is what the whole logic is. Okay. Now, look at when I call c dot item, what is c? c is my dictionary. When I tell c dot items, what do I get? One key and a value that will be for example, take this as an example, a will be copied to k, 10 will be copied to v, but what are you writing into a list? tmp which is a list, you are appending not k comma v, it is v comma k. Right. So, in that case you are writing the value first and then the key. So, when you tell sort what is happening? It will check what is your first occurrence, the first occurrence gets sorted, the first occurrence get sorted, but why did we get an answer like this? We should have got like 1, 10, 22, no? why it is coming in the other order? Because we are told reverse equal to true. So, in that case we are telling that 22 will be, uh, it is not ascending, right? descending 22, 10 and 1. Now, if I miss out this reverse equal to true, then it will be ascending. So, in that case we get 1, 10 and 22 the corresponding key. So, what is the change? If I want to sort an value, I should be very careful that value should be my first occurrence right in the tuple. So, I should change here because what I read will be key value, but when I write a value and key I should interchange so that it sorts on the first element in the tuple. So, we can do like if a tuple has uh, two elements like this based on the key we can do or based on the value also can be sorted. So, what you, you have to remember here is this part. How are you adding an element to a list where you are reading it as a key value, but while adding you are adding as a value and a key. So, that, that is very important here. So, sorting is done for tuples using either a value or a key. So, what is the change that we are supposed to look at? How we add that element to the list, right? So, if it is key, yeah, it should be key value. If it is sorting by value, then it should be v comma k that is value should come first and then the key, right? So, we will end the session here. So, next session we will talk about few more functions and we will take up the exercise problems also. Thank you.